Hi all, welcome to your channel. So in today's video, we are going to discuss a complete detailed video about the programming fundamental part, uh, which is comes in your general training. If you haven't watched my Java one shot video, you will be able to know what is the parts of the exam, how the exam is going to conduct, and you will understand what are the things. So we are discussing about the programming fundamental part uh, of that. Uh, exam okay so it will consist of 15 marks and uh, there, there's a combined time of three hour in that three hour you have to complete your programming fundamental oops and dsa so if somebody who wants to score really good marks you have to complete your pf within 30 minutes or maybe you can say 20 to 30 minutes otherwise you will not be able to you know score good marks in oops because oops need some more time than pf and dsa that's obvious and uh, in this video i'm going to discuss everything related to pf what are the things that is generally asked and which level you have to prepare for the exam my mistakes my learnings and of course i will give you the sample questions plus how the actual model of the question paper everything we will be discussing in this video so uh, just listen to these things it is worth it because and to those people who didn't skip the video to the question part and still here i want to show you that it is not about the questions it is not about the question pattern it is nothing it is purely based on your concept the concept must be the king okay so it is not related to see if you are not cleared anything if you are not clear your concept if you are somebody who is only following okay this this sample question i have to solve this is the thing i have to solve and you are practicing a lot of questions even though i have given 25 questions you can practice it it is enough but still if something, if something is, you know, twisted in that question, if something is, you know, again, additional happen in that question, if somebody who's only scored these things and, you know, by hurting the stuff, they will be not able to clear the exam. You have to understand the concept. You have to understand the code flow. That is the point. So, you know, uh, thinking much about the question, the pattern, that is not important. Focus on the actual thing, which is the logic. Improve your logic, improve your problem solving ability. That will help you scoring good marks. We are going to discuss about the syllabus of the Java programming fundamental. What are the things that you have to study and in which depth uh, you have to prepare really hard for these things. So now let's discuss everything one by one. First most thing will be the Java keywords and next is the variables, identifier, the types of the data type which is primitive and non-primitive type and uh, operators. Operators are of with different types which are arithmetic, assignment, unary, relational, logical and you have to understand the operator precedence and which means evaluating the operators in which way and you know the precedence and associativity of the operators etc. And next thing is actually implicit and explicit conversion. You have to know the difference between these things and you have to apply uh, these things in your programming also. In some cases, they will ask the implicit and explicit conversion in uh, different scenarios. You have to understand this thing. This is important. The conversion thing is important. Next, that the most important thing about the PF is actually the control structures. The type of the control structures is our sequential, decisional selection and the iteration. In the decisional selection, you can see these, uh, the if, if else, if else if, that else if ladder, everything comes under the decision or selection. In this section, we will write a condition. If the condition is true, we will, you know, follow the code or the statements that is in the if part. Otherwise, we will go to the else part. Okay, that is the, I mean, that is completely based on the decision. So, we are actually deciding on the basis of the condition. That is why the name is actually decision or selection statements. And by writing the uh, conditions for the if statement, uh, we will definitely gonna use the logical operators which is AND, OR and NOT. So you have to uh, notice these logical operators that is important in the case of if condition. We now comes the iterative statements which are the for, while and do while loops. Iteration means you know doing a thing multiple times. So uh, by the help of loops only we are able to do the things in a multiple way. My suggestion to learning loops and what are the you know difference between loops and everything the one thing, the one and only way to understand, you know, in depth about loops is you have to practice the pattern questions. If you're doing something in the, in the for loop, try to do it in while loop also. Even though both loops have their own uh, preferences. If you don't know the number or if you don't know how many times you are going to iterate the same thing, uh, in that case, while loop is used and if you know how many times the thing is going to iterate, you can use the for loop. But about the pattern printing, do not forget that. That's the best way to learn about the logic and you know, the how the loops is going to work. Okay.
so do that next set of most important thing is the built in classes so in uh, in our course or maybe in the pf they are discussing about four classes four building classes which are string character math and scanner even though string and the character is widely used in your exam they will mainly concentrate on string and character built in classes you have to actually go through everything every string methods that is discussed in your program i mean that is discussed in your course once you you know you are in the training if you are in the training now and uh, if you are about to go and if, if you are about to join the infosys before that you will be not able to you know go through the course and you know you you are not able to see the lex course and even i i can't also you know show you the course that is not permitted that is very confidential so once you join infosys only uh, you will be able to see the lex course and all the stuff that's why i can't show you and open the lex and you know show these things but still i'm saying that you have to understand in depth about string and the string classes and all the methods all the possible methods of string so you can actually learn it by you know in the google or you can actually learn it from the geek for geeks etc you just uh, search like you just search like string basic functions in java so you'll be get to know a lot of things like the uh, so some of the methods are um, length function methods which means the function that you can actually work on strings uh, length then concat then uh, string uh, dot equals then to lower case to upper case char, uh, dot character dot contains etc these all things it is very important and again there will be lot of other methods also during the joining uh, once you are in the training and once you get to know about the course and everything you will get to know okay so don't worry about that and the next post thing is about the character so the character and the string these all things you know this will compendly ask in your questions there will be questions like you have to actually convert the string into a set of or maybe the array of characters and you know do something with the uh, with that array and uh, things will be like that questions will be in that way you have to actually go through thoroughly in these two things character class and string class these are these two are built in classes in java and thing is about the break and the continue this is very 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 important you have to know what is the exact meaning of break even though the break will comes with the switch it's a part of the switch but still the break will be used in loops and the next thing is actually uh, nested loops even though uh, to practice this thing you have to actually practice a lot of pattern going to learn about arrays you have to go through everything everything which means uh, the basics of array what is the, uh, the declaration and you know declaring array in different ways the uh, array functions i mean the length function of array and one more loop that is comes uh, comes with array which is actually for each loop it is very simple because uh, in for loop we have to use the index value but in for each loop we don't need to use any index we can just look through the collection i mean the things inside the loop so it's like uh you don't need to specify everything by using the index number which is actually easy in case if you wanted to loop through the array you can use a for each loop and again in the exam i'll say mostly the for each loop will comes in hand in some question in some question for each loop is better than using for loop and you can use for loop also but still you have to understand the difference between and when and where and how you can the de use these things and alternatively in which cases you can use these things there will be some array functions like you know split sort what is actually a multi dimensional array you have to go through this and these all things will come some comes under the array now we are going to discuss about the method which is actually important because in the exam we are not going to write everything from the scratch we are actually using the functions function of code uh, which will do a particular action so every method will have a specific you know purpose and it is also for the reusability of the code so you don't need to write your code from you know writing everything in line by line it is not the way in the exam also and it is not a professional way also you have to actually prepare i mean you have to actually write everything under the methods you have to write every your logic and everything in the method and then you can call these things in the main method which is public static void main uh that is the thing that that's actually the pattern of the question also uh, and here comes the important section which is actually from my mistakes and you know uh, my learnings about the pf how you can actually study the pf and uh, what is the actual importance of pf for your oops and dsa the first most thing is this is the basics you have to actually you know build your brain really hard do not by by heart the code do not copy paste the code from here and there write everything from the scratch once you look into a question you must know in which way you know the how the code flow is going to work i have seen lot of people that's why i'm saying 
lot of people are writing you you see if there is a problem they'll be like you know writing a column writing the program and everything like the while then writing the loop what is the use of that you will not learn programming by this way you have to practice type again practice why we are writing the four what is the meaning of four inch i is equal to zero why the i less than five why the i plus plus why the system dot out to print ln why it is not print you have to understand everything guys otherwise you will not clear the exam how can you Trust me, you will not clear. I'm really sorry to break the rules, but I'm. I wanted to be honest, and I wanted to you score good marks like me. I scored sixty out of sixty. Please score good marks. Otherwise, you will not get any agreement or maybe any incentive. That's true. Now we are going to discuss about the next part, which is actually uh, my learnings and my mistakes that I did in my PF. Which first most mistake was obviously I didn't start my preparation from the beginning. I was actually you know started my PF preparation on the middle of the OOPS class, and that's the problem. I didn't get enough time to practice the OOPS as well as the DSA because I was completely into OOPS. Sorry, uh, completely into PF. and that is actually a positive and a negative why it is positive because i could pass the exam in the second attempt with full marks because my pf and my base was very 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 strong and i just need to practice oops and the dsa to know the concepts and i know how to code and i don't need to you know by heart the things i don't need to write my code anywhere if there is a question i will be able to solve the question by seeing it you know by uh, by using my logic and you know problem solving ability so that thing i made in my uh, first attempt even though i failed but my pf was very strong my oops and dsa wasn't strong enough because i didn't get the time most thing is if you stuck in somewhere uh, do not let your ego to sit there Okay, that's a problem happened with me. I was like, I wanted to score this. I wanted to, you know, solve this thing right now. Otherwise, I will not go through the second question. The first question must be solved. And I sit the complete day with that. One thing is actually, I want to say that everybody can pass this exam. Everyone can pass this exam. Is that within the limited time you have to actually prepare for the exam? So do not stick with, uh, do not actually stick uh, stuck with the question. If you stuck with some question, move on. Ask your chat GPT, Google, then your friends, then educator, every everyone, uh, just understand the concept again. Solve it multiple times. That's only way. And the third most thing is that do not actually copy paste the code from ChatGPT to an uh, you know look it. Even though it is not from the ChatGPT, uh, seems like if you pr uh, you will create a package in the Eclipse IDE, you are going to create a package and there will be multiple questions you have to solve. Assignment questions. There will be one assignment question and there will be two. Uh, I mean multiple multiple assignment questions that will be there. And uh, just imagine you solved one question and the fourth question is somewhat similar to the first. What you will do? You will you have to say in the say the time right? So you will just copy paste the thing to the four. That much of pro in you know understanding these all things you can do. Otherwise, if you have any doubts, you know any doubts in the concepts, type the code. Do not just copy paste from here and there, because if you type more, you will get more errors. So by getting more errors only, you have to solve the errors and you have to understand. And in the exam, if you get these errors. you will be like you will not get panic okay so that's happened to me also if i solved more things i got more errors and in the exam it was easy for me that i the last one thing is okay practicing multiple times you have to practice according to the time you know and the one thing that i must say is that time management is a key those who man, how, uh, know how to manage your time for the preparation they will win now we are actually going to discuss the last session which is miscellaneous even though it is important uh first thing is about the trios in the course you can see once you join infosys and once you you know enter into the training and every stuff is going to happen you will be see a lot of trios exercises and assignments will be in the course in the java course you have to solve everything even if you can't solve something uh then that's okay don't stress yourself but solve maximum of the things that is very important and the second most thing is there will be some quiz type of questions under every session okay once you you know uh, complete your for loop thing there will be some quiz quiz questions you have to actually note down all the quiz questions that is most 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 important find the same type of questions in your objective also so objective is also very very important the you will only know the real importance of objective once you will found any uh, tough question in your pf or you can say in your oops or dsa i hope you will all get easy questions but still in at the worst case maybe if some uh, some batch or maybe some people will experience tough questions in that case maybe there is a chance that they'll going to make the 
oops or maybe you can say the objective part easy and you will score you, you will be able to score good marks so that so uh, that's why i discuss like uh, you have to you know be very strong in your objective as well as in hands on so you have to balance both so these are all the important you know sample questions for your pf and i'm not going to say that you just have to solve these questions but uh, if you if you are able to solve these questions then it will be easy for you to you know tackle the exam by uh, just you know preparing really hard because these questions also requires a lot of you know logic and uh, you know concept and knowledge that's why i'm saying uh, you have to solve these things and if anything is not solvable or you can say uh, you are uh, you can't solve it by yourself then just leave their questions and you know try to solve at least 15 to 20 questions in this set uh yeah that's all and this will be the you know the sample of the question that you are going to face the pf i mean the structure of the sample question because in in your pf exam you will get uh, in the eclipse i mean the exam the platform where you are going to write the exam you will get the three sessions you can say maybe the three packages so in every uh, package you will get a one java class so j just imagine in the pf this will be the question uh, dot java that file and in the in this same question you will get a method where you can actually you know write the logic and there will be a main method that main method that that was the thing i'm uh, repeatedly saying that you don't have to you know you don't please don't change the structure of the main method uh, you just need to write your code or you can say the logic inside the comment section okay so uh, in the question if you observe the question you can clearly see that i have commented a section where trainees need to be written something like that and that will be the thing so please note that and you know write the logic only on that commented section under the commented section okay that will be the uh, sample we can say the model of the question so you don't need to write everything from the scratch you just need to understand you know uh, that's why i'm saying the method was important i mean i i have just shared in the video that method is important you have to understand the things and yeah that's all and actually this is the way we are normally writing the question like see uh, you are actually declaring the variable and everything under the main method you know creating the code from the scratch but uh, that's why i shared both the things in the exam you will not get uh, anything like this you have to actually you know write the logic inside the methods were the commented sections under the commented sections okay and this will be the second alternative solution for the same question uh, you can check it and here comes the actual model question uh, and the earlier i have showed the answer itself but still uh, here i wanted to you know show the exact paper see the trainees has to be uh, write code here right uh, in that comment section under the comment section only you have to write the logic of the uh, you know the code so the main method will be there you don't need to change the uh, main method and uh, not have, oh, no, anything you do, please don't change any of the given you know variables you know methods names etc don't change anything uh, it will directly leads you a zero mark which is you know you are you know um, changing the structure of the code so structural error will be there so obviously the mark will be zero uh, so please don't change anything you know you just need to write the logic one more thing i wanted to show you that this is not the exam level question uh, this is just a very very basic but i just wanted to show you the model this is this is how the you know the uh, java file uh, looks like in the exam and uh, i have in, uh, shared the enough questions like the 25 questions i have shared and if you want to know which which questions is you know solvable and uh, what are the important questions or in which level you can solve the questions i will pin it in the comment section uh, the numbers of the questions from the list so you can check it out also one more thing that uh, there will be some video sets in the course uh, there is no need to watch that videos completely you know thoroughly you don't need to watch that videos if you have some time you can watch it otherwise you know keep practicing if you have very less time do not you know waste your time in that videos and if you really uh, if you are really somebody who want to watch the video and then only you can learn but still i'm not going to say that that videos is kind of explanation videos that there will be some they they will discuss some problem statement then uh, there will be some solution etc but i am strongly suggest you if you are having very less time don't need to watch the videos directly take the assi assignment questions assessment questions practice all things okay practice multiple times and you know revise everything syntax don't forget the syntax in the exam uh, that things you have to you know keep in mind and i think i have covered everything uh, practice more you know keep practicing keep exploring and next video is about uh, the oops and how you can actually tackle the oops question 
So, uh, I'll see you on the bye.